All right. So it's been a couple days now, uh, three to be exact, since the debacle in Dallas. And I remember going on live after it. This is going to be a unique video because I remember going on live after it. It was like I was trying to calm down an angry mob. Because I was sitting here live on a stream with all of you. Everybody's getting upset, talking about how we got cheated. I was like, well, the wide receiver covered him up anyway. And like all of these different things were happening. But I was not able to see like the video footage of Taylor Decker out there going like this, right? Saying, I'm reporting eligible. Or maybe he was just saying, I'm hungry. You want to go for dinner afterward? No, I, I saw a meme about that. But like, here's the thing that I don't understand. There keeps coming out reports and reports. So in this video, we're going to talk about how the NFL just doubled down yesterday on their previous ruling. And it doesn't mean that they said that nope, we deemed it was fair. They actually went on to another level, and we're going to get to that, but let's start with a quick replay of what was happening. And this is something that I don't know if we've actually uh, talked about yet, but Dan Campbell physically drew the Lions' two-point play and showed the refs before the Cowboys game. We knew earlier that he was talking about it. Right? Like we knew that he was talking about it, but we didn't know that he actually went and drew it out for him. It's almost like one of those things where somebody explains something to you and you look at him, you're like, how about you explain it to me like I'm five? That's what Dan Campbell did. That's what he did for the officials in this game. He said, this is how we're going to do it. This is how he's going to run. This is where Dan Skipper is going to come in. And they were fine with it. And then they still said 70 reported eligible. It was almost like if he drew it before him, it's almost like that hurt because it's almost like he thought, oh, I remember you talking about this at 70, isn't it? But it wasn't. It wasn't 70. So now let's talk about the next thing that's happening. This was reported yesterday, and it was that the NFL won't change eligibility reporting after Lions-Cowboys controversy. In fact, it says the NFL does not plan to change the procedure for players reporting as eligible. In wake of the controversy surrounding the Dallas Cowboys 2019 run of the Lions, according to Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio, here's what the league says. The league views the situation as an effort by the Lions to engage in deception and gamesmanship that backfired. Okay, first off, gamesmanship and deception of course that's what they're doing. Isn't that the whole point of offenses in the NFL right now? Just a ton of pre-snap motion. You don't know what player is going to run out, what player is going to go out for a pass, who's going to stay in the block. The defense does the same thing. What do you think the Minnesota Vikings are doing when they sent when they put eight players on the line? You don't know if it's like a Madden all-out blitz where they're going to blitz all eight or if they're going to simply drop back seven or eight players. You never know. That's deception. That's the point. And what we are doing here is no different. And by the way, here's the thing that just drives me absolutely up a wall. If you're sitting here talking about deception, the referee is still going to go to the defense. He is still going to tell the defense which number is eligible. How much can you deceive? Honestly, the only conversation you could possibly have is why were we trying to deceive if the ref was going to go tell him the number anyway? Like, what I liked is that they had Panay Sewell and Taylor Decker walk up to the official together, 58 and 68. So when the ref goes out there and says 68 eligible, you remember seeing 58 and 68 standing next to each other, and you might think for a second, did he say 58? Or did he say 68? 58, 68? I like that. That makes the most sense to me. Um, but we knew it was going on. And by the way, if the league is going to sit here and say this was a, to engage in deception and gamesmanship, then why didn't the official, why didn't Brad Allen just say right then, that doesn't work. That's deception. We're not going to allow that. Like, that makes no sense. So here was my thought process when the whole thing happened. My thought process, to be completely honest, was, oh, we're in Dallas. It's going to happen again. Makes sense. This is the kind of crap that happens in Dallas. And I understand the tripping penalty. I do. I get it. And that's why I didn't get that mad. In fact, my next thought process, we could talk about the pass interference on Amon Ross St. Brown too, by the way. But um, that was committed against him. But 
my thought process was, okay, good. This happens to the Lions every year. At least it's not in the playoffs. And now if we have to go to Dallas in the playoffs, at least this will be a memory and the officials won't be as quick to screw us again, quite frankly. I don't know how else to put it. So that was my whole thought. And I was like, this is good. It happened in the regular season. I'd rather happen in week 17. And now we know our fate than happen in round two of the playoffs in the divisional round or in the wild card round. And now the NFL realizes like, all right, we long the, we wronged the Lions. We're not going to do it again. But then they come out with this crap report that it was an effort of deception and gamesmanship. We drew it out. Like if it was so bad, why did the officials say before the game, no problem? Why did he give his stamp of approval? That doesn't make any sense. So I, I know Chris has done a video and a half kind of on this. I hadn't yet. And I wanted to talk about it. Um, do I think that this was the full difference in the game? No. Like, of course not. I mean, Jared Goff threw two interceptions. Jared Goff still is struggling throwing the ball outside the numbers. It's always been a weakness uh, of his. And at least now he's trying to do it. The problem is it resulted in two interceptions and one uh, two-point conversion where he threw it poorly, so we did not convert on that to go up 21-19. Can we talk all we want about how when we got um, the illegal touching penalty and the ball got moved back to the seven, kick the extra point? I agree. We should. We get reports later. Dan Campbell said to the team, hey, we're going to get the ball. We're going to go down. We're going to score a touchdown, and then we're going for two. Dan Campbell is nothing if he's not honest. He has always been so honest. Like, he can't even hide the truth. It's something in him, something that's the opposite of broken. Because broken is when you can't be honest, right? So there's something very good in him that does not allow him to lie. And I think when I watch all of this, it's like, no, there's there's honesty. We were being, yes, deceptive in the rules. That's the whole point. You do everything you can within the rules to gain a tactical advantage over your opponent. Hello. Like, that's what we do. And the NFL saying crap like that about trying to engage in deception and gamesmanship is just so frustrating. It's so frustrating because then why did you say okay in the beginning? And honestly, here's the reason it's even more frustrating. It has nothing to do with the fact that the referee just flat out didn't listen. He didn't, the referee just flat out did not listen. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. Um, is there some frustration? Yes. Am I happy that we're the three seed? Yes. I would rather be the two. All right. Am I happy? How do I want to put this? Am I happy that um, we might get a second home game? Absolutely, sure. So, I mean, we still could. We just need whoever the two seed is to lose, and we'll have a home game. It's not that bad. So there's still a plenty of rooting interest. I just thought it was crazy when the NFL doubled down on this. All right, thanks for watching. Watch the next one. We'll keep it more positive this week, I promise. Are we resting our starters? Great question. Uh, let's talk about that in future videos. Maybe leave a comment now. All right, thanks. See ya.